Hi, this is Anne from The Useless Crafter. All right, I made my window much bigger today because I actually wanted to show you what this graduation cap looks like. So I tried to do the colors very similar um, so that I can visualize it in Design Space so you can kind of see what Design Space looks like and how it turned out. So the butterflies, what I did is, um, you see how they're layered on top of each other? I used my hot glue gun to prop open basically all these little butterfly layers. So um, each butterfly is a minimum of three sheets or three colors of cardstock. And so with each layer, I would put some glue gun in between. So when it dries, it keeps my butterfly wings propped open. And so I did that for the bottom layer. And then the second layer of butterflies actually just sat on top and I did more glue using my glue gun. And so this thing is just, can you see like the depth? It has a lot of butterflies and it's so pretty. I just love it. Um, so, okay. So let's get started on this and I think I can change my size. Good. <laughs> Cause that was going to bother me the whole time. Okay. I wanted you to see what my design space looked like at the end so that you could, the way I organized it. So I did the words, I'm gonna show you how to do the offset and in Inkscape and then we'll come back to design space. But I wanted you to see all the different layers. So, and the way I organized it is you can see this type of butterfly, the one with the, the fatter, wider ones. Um, I did four, basically four sizes. Um, and then I did three sizes of this butterfly over here. And then this bottom one, I did three, but each butterfly actually had four layers. So I tried to change it up. So even though it's a ton of butterflies on there, um, that they were all a little different, a little different size, different colors. And then what I did was as I did the layers and I made each one bigger, I sort of skipped around. All right, this for, you know, for these uh, four right here, they are the same butterfly, right? The same um, look. So if I did this one as a top layer is my purple and I knew that my colors were going to be glitter. So I would do glitter, non-glitter, maybe glitter. So, you know, you kind of want to stagger that as well. And then I wanted to make sure that none of these um, none of the same butterfly has a purple top again. Now this one, I did do the same top. I'm surprised I did that, but, um, oh, I, maybe because I had four, I don't know. Um, and then this one. So that's how I, I wanted to give, give you my thought process, you know, for this. All right. So let's jump into Inkscape really quickly because I knew that my, um, my cardstock in the back was going to be a pale pink glitter cardstock. So it was going to be hard to read anything on top of that. So I knew I needed to do an offset. So let's look at adventure. So before we go into Inkscape, I love font lab pad. And if you don't have this, you should download it because I'll type out adventure right now. What I like about this is definitely for my script um, fonts, and I'll show you how beautiful that looks right away. Oh, this one's too crazy because it's all caps, but let me retype that so you can see how beautiful it would look. So that's what adventure would look like, right? That would have taken a long time in design space because we would have needed to move everything over and maybe some needed to be moved up a little bit. You know, like this is not an even, um, like the U is a little bit higher than the T. So this would have taken a long time to piece together. And if you're doing like a lot of things, I always like to do font lap pad. And what I mean by a lot of things is, you know, if you were doing 15 names, it would take forever to do 15 names and to move all the letters perfectly. Um, but in this case, adventure was actually a print, but even the print I like because, um, Sorry, getting distracted. Um, even the print I like because the the spacing is not as wide as it would be in design space. And let me show you, see how close this is? Let me show you what it would look like in here. So let's go to text. Um, this was popcorn. And this is such a cute font too. I 
I feel like the spacing between the D and the V is kind of big as well as um, right here and right here, as opposed to, I'll pull this up. Do you see how the U is super close to the T? I feel like in design space, even for our print fonts, um, it's still too wide, like too far out, spaced out. So I like using Font Lab Pad for almost everything. But if I'm going to take something into Inkscape, I always do it here first. So you want to save at, save as and then name it. And then let's go to Inkscape. So in Inkscape, you're going to import and I named it Adventure. So here's Adventure. I want to make sure that it's locked. So just like in Design Space, locking just means that when I pull it big, it gets as wide as it does in height, right, proportionately. So I pull it out really, really big, okay? Now you see right now this is selected, right? So I'm going to click outside of that. So in this white space, I'm going to click on it so that it's no longer active. I'm going to go to the paint bucket. Oh, it's not going to let me do it. Hold on. Let me make it smaller so we can click on the paint bucket. Come on. I want to stretch this out. Why isn't it letting me stretch out? There. Okay. So I want to go to the paint bucket. And I'm going to pick a different color. So this is in black. I'm going to pick a blue, let's say. All right. And then this grow shrink by, that's how much bigger it's going to grow by, is by 20. So I like using 20. And then I'll go to 40 if I want another offset. But I like 20. 20 was what I use. And it's just, it gives me that beautiful outline. That's all I want. So now I'm going to click on my adventure. And... Do you see how each letter, it's getting giving me that offset? So, oops. Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can undo that. I don't know why on this R it didn't. Let's see if I click here. Okay, so click in the top corner, and then it gets the whole thing, okay? All right, then I'm going to go to Path and Object to Path. Don't ask me why. I'm just following steps, okay? <laughs> and then go to File, Save As. You save it as an SVG. Remember where you save it because now we're going to upload it into Design Space, okay? So in Design Space, you just go to Upload, um, Upload Image, Browse, and you look for the one that you did. And I think I named it, uh, here it is, Adventure Offset, right? So I'm going to open it, and there it is. So you can bring it in and it's right over here. So sometimes it's funky. I don't know why it did that. It didn't do that on the one we just did, but I didn't save that one. This is the one I did. Um, I would just ungroup it and then move everything over. Yeah, I don't know what these are. You can just delete it, like just a weird, <laughs> All right, so here's that, oops, hold on, undo. So when I ungrouped it, everything got ungrouped, right? So, wow, what happened there? Hold on, undo. I feel like my adventure, I think I lost, hold on. Oh, here's my, hold on. I'm going to delete this. I feel like I got a bad version of this. So let's delete this, let's delete this. And let's actually go and save the other one. All right, sorry, going back to, to Inkscape. All right, file, um, save as, and I'll do adventure demo two. So I'll remember, all right, so it's on my desktop. Let's go to design space and upload. Upload image, browse, and adventure, demo, here it is. Okay, so save, and then let's bring it in. All right, so here it is, right? Let me get rid of this. Okay, so this I'm going to ungroup, and then the bottom one, See how I highlighted it? I'm going to arrange, send to the front, 
and then move it down. And then this one, I'm just gonna grab it and I'm gonna weld it. That's my background. And now you have, and let's bring it to the front. And now you have this beautiful offset that's just perfect. I love, I mean, I just love the way it looks, right? Anything offset, and let me show you. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger again. <laughs> and I'll show you what that offset looks like. And then also while we're looking at this, I wanna show you too. So I did it in white glitter cardstock and a metallic cardstock, both from Cricut. And I just really love the way it looks. And then, you know, if you notice, and so the, and then begins, that's a different script font. And I did it the opposite. I did the white offset and then the gold cardstock on top. And then I did the opposite for adventure, right? So just a different look, like it's all the same theme, but a little bit different. Oh, the other thing I wanna show you is, so I was messing around. I kind of thought originally my design was going to have a, a cut circle and then also like a line so that I, I just thought it needed more leeway to get this onto the cap or whatever. But this hole is perfectly fine. And then you put your tassel on, it will stay put. I mean, of course, you're going to, you know, I would use glue dots or something to make sure it stays on my cap exactly the way I want to. But I feel like overall, it's a very, very stable design. So, all right, let me make myself smaller. We'll get to designing, okay? So now that you know how to do the offset, do the same for and so the begins or whatever you wanna put, right? Um, the cap was eight by eight. So the what I would do is I would go to shapes. Mm, sorry, won't let me do it. Let's uh, bring in a square. Now, I would change the size first here. So let's make that eight. And then, um, let's see how big the hole is. I don't remember when I measured it the first time. And where's my little dot? Oh, I guess it doesn't have the dot. Um, I would just do a little circle. Let's see if it lets me do it. Nope. Measure your circle and see. But like I said, the cap really gives you a lot of leeway. Um, Cause if you put it in at an angle, it just, you don't have to um, give yourself extra room for that, for that uh, cap, for the hole. So whatever the hole is, and I think, sorry, let me measure my line. Have it right here. Oh, it's so hard to see. Let me pull out my ruler. It is 0.75. So let's make that 0.75. And then what I did was I kept the inside and I'm going to um, just put it right on top of the cap. I'll use a glue dot and put it on top. It looked really good um, when I did it. So, okay. Um, all right, now you have the circle and the, and the square. Grab the two and align. We wanna center it and then slice it. So now you have your, your perfect design. Now I twisted, you know, I rotated mine. Cause once you rotate it, do you see how the dimensions change? It's saying it's 11 inches. So you just wanna make sure that you get your dimensions first and, and then twist it. Um, and I rotated it just because I knew I wanted to do my design this way at an, um, as a diamond instead of a square. So, all right, so once you do that, then you bring in all your letters or your words, your name, whatever it is. I, from after the moment that I measure my cap and I cut out the circle, I am no longer looking at size because my cap is already my template, my guide. So everything else needs to be proportionate to this cap. I really don't care whether adventure is 10 inches, five inches, it really doesn't matter. I wanna make sure it's proportionate within this cap. So that's how I design. Um, you may be different, but I pick the one thing that I know is gonna be sized correctly and then everything else needs to go with it. Okay, so you have adventure, you have and so. Um, so I'm gonna delete this because we already know how to do this. Then I went to images. Let me, oh, it's not letting me click on images, okay. Let's go to images, and I used butterflies that were just part of Cricut Access. 
So butterfly, um, I, you know, let's say this one. I don't even remember the ones that I picked. I wanted them to look a little different though, right? So this one has like a lot of cuts, um, maybe one that has an antenna, like that one's, you know, good. And then I did a flatter one, like more like this, a wider one, I should say. Um, I think I did this one. Okay, so let's bring in those three. So then once I have my three, I kind of keep them out like this. And I basically, I did almost three of each, um, except one of them I did four. So I wanted 10 butterflies. I could have, for this one, I probably could have done 12 just to make it like super, super perfect. Um, but I know with all the different layers and cutting it, I wanted, I'd rather overdo my butterflies than have to go back and recut because you know how much long, like how long that would take. So just kind of in your head, um, figure that out. But so I sized like a few of them just to see like, okay, I kind of want it like that. And I kind of wanted like this. So how many do I need? So I started duplicating them here and then I brought it out over here. So I'll show you once you know how many. So, you know, I did it like this. Um, I wanted to make sure that I cleaned up my image, though, like this butterfly that would have killed my blade, all these little dots. So go to contour. And just click on the dots that you don't want. So we're removing these dots. And I love contour. So if you haven't quite figured it out, please just give it a shot. This makes it so fast to get rid of things or to isolate things. Um, oops, there. I want to get rid of these little ones. Okay. And do you see how quick that was? And now this butterfly is gonna cut so much better, right? Okay, so with this one, then what you wanna do is you wanna duplicate it because all those little cut pieces, it's it's not gonna show through unless you have a solid background. So on this one, which is the same size because we duplicated, go to contour and just hide all. And that's gonna hide everything. It's gonna give you a solid background. This one's gonna be of the same size. So right now, I usually just put it right underneath or right beside it. Then you're gonna duplicate it. This one you're gonna make slightly bigger. It's gonna go behind that one. Now, you see most of these have, you know, just the three layers. Um, if you want it to be really special, definitely make that fourth layer because the first two they're taped down together to show the, the beautiful holes so it feels like it's just one layer so in this case it's when you look at it it just looks like it's a two-layered butterfly so if you want to make it really really special then i would duplicate it and have your you know your re your real third layer i guess make that a little bit bigger and then from here i would duplicate this but size it differently so that even though it's of the same butterfly it's going to look slightly different so either make it a little bit smaller and then make this one a little bit bigger. And those are your three. Now I would go in and change my colors. So this one's gonna be a gold glitter cardstock. Then I want this one to be, um, I don't know, like think of your different colors. And then if this one's green, then maybe make this one green. And then, so you color it all right now. And I ended up doing um, as you can see over here, purple. So this was purple glitter. Um, this one was pink regular cardstock, pink glitter. And this one was the metallic. So I kind of had my few colors that I just coordinated. That's how you do this one. Um, normally I would weld off the antennas, but in the end, what I did was I cut off the antennas of all the ones in the back, the bigger butterflies. So each butterfly that had the antenna only has a top one. And let me show you what I mean. Because I don't like that, you know, this isn't a true offset. So you have the antennas kind of going off in different directions. So um, I'll make this bigger so you can see. 
Um, so actually, I kept some of them. I was really random on here. Um, this butterfly right here only has one set of antenna. I just basically took my scissors and cut off the ones in the back. So you can do that, or I've seen I've seen people post their projects with the multiple antennas. It's totally up to you um, and what you like. Okay, so let's look at um, these two butterflies. This one already has the background for you, so when you ungroup it, this one's already your um, background layer, and then I would just duplicate this one, make it a little bit bigger, and then duplicate again, and make a little bit bigger. And and this is how I, you know, quickly got my different layers. Um, grab this, duplicate, and then resize here because you want to make it a little bit different than your first butterfly, and then you do your color change. And that's all that there is to this thing. I absolutely loved it. I hope that you make yours too. It's so easy. And the cap, I mean, it just looks so pretty on. So please comment. Let me know what you think. Or if you have a project that you want to see, please let me know. All right. Bye, guys.